right? And the second part of it is that um, we're going to talk about these words abiding in Christ. Why are these words of such particular importance to me, and it should be to all of us, is because now we are isolated from the sacraments. The sacraments were how we practice that union and abiding and indwelling of Christ in us, very specifically and most uh, effectively through the body and the blood of our Savior. Um, and the body and blood is what we cannot partake of tomorrow. So how am somebody like me, weak and miserable, uh, unable to, to commune, how am I able to partake or, or to unite and to be abiding in Christ? And this is a very favorite phrase of St. John in his epistles and in, and in his gospel. But how I got here was first because I wanted to do a Bible study on Psalm 91, which I'm sure all of you have been reading and finding, hopefully finding comfort in. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him I will trust. I have loved this verse for decades now. This verse has been a favorite of mine. And in that second line, um, that shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty, that word struck me, and I said, I want to talk about abiding in Christ. And as I uh, did my re research and was working through um, some books today, I found that in the Old Testament, that word meant a permanence, a permanence in a relationship. Um, abiding, for example, a permanence. Uh, for example, the word of the Lord abides forever. The word of the Lord abides forever. That's a permanence that is not going to cease at the end of, uh, of this uh, you know, time or at the end of this um, living on earth. It's going to continue. And so in that, going back, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High, which is now on earth, shall abide forever in eternity under the shadow of the Almighty. And also we know from the writings of St. John, that to abide in Christ, or that word abiding, meant a, a permanence in that relationship between the Father and the Son, and also a permanence in the relationship between the Son and the Christian. Um, I, I mentioned this uh, verse before, um, but here is a very important chapter. I'm not going to give you all the times that it comes up. You can do a search online very easy. But in John chapter 15, from uh, verse 1 to maybe 10 or 11 or 12, I have it here. You're going to hear this word 11 times. 11 times. Let's read that together. I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you. So a branch connected to a tree abides, the branch abides in the tree. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. As the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. This is so funny because, you know, as we're growing up, uh, we were told in our writing classes, uh, try to use different words. Um, don't just repeat the same word like good <laughs> or like uh, fun. You know, try to use uh, different adjectives and synonyms and whatnot. Uh, St. John purposefully, you know, as, a beautiful, as beautiful as a writer as he is, 
He purposefully repeats certain words to carry you on that word to a higher abode. I mean, he is helping us to soar into the heavens with this word, abide, abide, that permanence. Uh, and we're going to come back to uh, speaking about bits of this, uh, of this passage later on. Another idea, he doesn't use the same word, but it's the same concept. In his prayer, in John chapter 17, um, and by the way, this is all part of the same sermon or speech from what I was just reading. Uh, if you remember, the Last Supper in the Gospel of uh, John, um, you know, he kind of finishes. He actually, there's no Last Supper, but the, he washes the feet of Christ, uh, of the disciples, sorry. And then he continues with this uh, in chapter 14, 15, 16, 17. He has this long sermon. And it ends in chapter 17. So while we were just in chapter 15, which is part of that sermon, now chapter 17. I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. So he's praying for the disciples and those, us, who will believe through the words of the disciples. That they all may be one, as you, Father, are in me and I in you. That they also may be one in us, that the word may believe, sorry, that the world may believe that you sent me. So oneness is a message to those who are in the world. And you can see how us not being able to abide in Christ literally through the partaking of the body is an attack by the devil on the oneness that we're supposed to have. But we're going to find a way that we can redeem some of that abiding in Christ. And we can work on abiding in Christ without the sacrament. I should say more clearly, what we're going to work on is what should accompany the sacrament. So that we partake of the body and blood and we abide in him for the rest of the week. He says, and the glory which you gave me, I have given them that they may be one, just as we are one. I in them, you in me, that they may be made perfect in one. And that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. So this idea of abiding and union and being one are all, uh, all you can say, synonymous with one another. another. Um, abiding, uh, you know, not because to abide in Christ and to be united with Christ, it has to be clear that St. John is not at any point saying that we become the Father or we become the Son, but that there's a pattern of oneness between the Father and the Son and that we will follow in that pattern between the Son, Jesus Christ, um, and the Father, or the Son and the Christian. Sorry, the Son and the Christian are united uh, as the Father and the Son are. Uh, and I'm being very specific to the, the Gospel of John, not going into... Um, any other passages right now, uh, but I think uh, we can turn to St. Paul. St. Paul talks about union with, um, with Christ by the, the phrase in Christ, or with Christ, or in Him, in Him. I, you know, go through all the Pauline epistles and just underline in Christ, in Christ, in Him, in Him, and you're going to see some beautiful passages. I just I just did a quick search here. I I don't do PowerPoints. I don't know how to. So this is my best attempt, and hopefully it'll get better. But um, I just pulled out a couple of verses. In chapter 8 of Romans, we know that St. Paul is talking about the Holy Spirit. And he starts off by saying, There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. So we see here that being in Christ Jesus means that there has to be some action, right? It's not, I'm just like um, a label that I'm in Christ, but I also must not walk according to the flesh. Those become, uh, go hand in hand. And, uh, and, Prior to 8 and 7 and in 6, especially 6, he speaks about baptism. 
uh, and seven about that internal struggle with sin, and then eight about the Holy Spirit. And chapter eight is a beautiful verse about God in us through the Spirit. But here you have in Jesus Christ. Chapter two of Corinthians. Now thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ and through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. That being, that abiding in Christ allows us to diffuse that fragrance of his knowledge everywhere. Again in chapter, in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And that's another beautiful verse, being new, newly created in Christ. Um, Galatians chapter 3, for you, uh, verse 26, you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. And that faith is an act of faith, not just a mental or an internal attitude towards Christ, but a mental, sorry, but a, phys a faith that is working. And then in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 10, in the dispensation of the fullness of the times, that is at the end, at the end, 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 he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth in him. A beautiful verse for that. And, and just talking about in Christ, these words in the epistles of St. Paul, we could spend a whole, uh, a whole Bible study. Maybe uh, I'll put something together for next week. But abiding in Christ. Now, it's not just about abiding in him in some um, untenuous way. How can we put our hands on this? How can we feel this? What does it mean? So we could say by abiding in God's love, and we could put some practices to there. 1 John 3, 17, whoever has this world's goods and sees his brother in need and shuts up his heart from him does not have the love of God abiding in him. So for that love of God to abide in me, it's not just by partaking of the body and blood. And for me to abide in Christ, it's not only to partake of the body and blood, but it means I have to extend my hand and open it to those who are in need there's a practice that we have to do and have to accomplish in our lives um, there's a, a wonderful verse that we will read during the during holy week from i think from the book of sarah that says uh, do not have your hands opened when it's time for you to receive and and closed or like tight clinched uh tight fisted when it's time to give so this is how we abide in the love of god and have the love of god abiding us directly through our relationship with our brother uh, chapter john chapter gospel of john chapter 15 9 and 10 as the father loved me i also have loved you abide in my love how do we do it if you keep my commandments you will abide in my love just as i have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love so I have to keep that those commandments. And that, by the way, is a wonderful study of the Old Testament as well as the New. Uh, what are the commandments of God? It's not just the Ten Commandments. And there's so much that is being commanded of us. We have to be able to divide and understand. It's not just about, you know, Old Testament eating kosher or not eating kosher. That has are not the fundamental. But Jesus Christ summed it up. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. Again, abiding in God's love, keeping our commandments, uh, or keeping the commandments of Christ, of God. And then First Epistle John, chapter 4, verse 16. And we have known and believed and believed the love that God has for us. God is love. And he who abides in love abides in God, and God in him. This practice of love. It's a practice that we have to continue to do. It's a practice that we have to stretch ourselves in order to do. We can abide in the light of God. Light and love and life are often synonymous in the writings of John. So they're interchangeable. And you'll see that here. Uh, 1 John 2, 10. He who loves his brother abides in the light and there is no cause for stumbling in him. He who loves his brother abides in the light. 
And uh, loving our brother is what we're working on during Lent. John 12, 46. I have come as a light into the world that whoever believes in me should not abide in darkness. It sounds obvious, right? Abiding in the light as opposed to abiding in the darkness. That abiding in the light, that abiding in the light is, and as opposed to the darkness, the darkness is that of the a sin of lying, not abiding in the truth. Uh, darkness is uh, following um, whatever is evil. And Jesus Christ mentioned that you know, the, they loved darkness more than the light because their deeds were evil. But anyone um, who comes to the light exposes himself to the light, that he might become a son or daughter of the light. This is written early on in the Gospel of John. Uh, forgive me for not having that reference out. Um, it's just off the top of my head. And we can abide in the truth of God. So we can abide in the love. We can abide in the light. We can abide in the truth. My little children, 1 John 3, 18. Let us not love in word or in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And by this we know that we are of the truth and shall uh, assure our hearts before him. By this we know that we are of the truth. Um, and is by us practicing what we hear, practicing what we know, and, and living out our existence, following the path of, of, of the righteous. Remember how at the very beginning of this talk, I said that the Bible reveals to us truth, and that truth is reality. And that reality is how we have to model our lives around that reality, following the truth and discovering that through the experiences of all the righteous people of the Old Testament, all the righteous people of the New Testament, and all the righteous people that we have known about since then. And this is how we abide in God's truth. We can abide in the teaching of Christ. This is in the second epistle of John. Uh, it's not chapter 9, it's verse 9. It's only one chapter. Whoever transgresses and does not abide in the doctrine or the teaching of Christ does not have God. He who abides in the doctrine of Christ has both the Father and the Son. It's important. It's important, uh, you know, brothers and sisters, it's important to study what is the doctrine of Christ. It can't just be simplified and, yeah, I just have to be uh, loving one another and that's it. No, there's, there's deep dogma in there that guides our ability to love and helps us to expand our ability to love. It's, you know, it, we have to understand that Christ himself is asking us to do that which is not normal, in the sense of that which is not common, to love our enemies, to pray for those who, uh, who to bless those who curse us, to do good to those who uh, spitefully use us, and to pray for those who spitefully use us and persecute us. Uh, that, that's not normal. But the doctrine of Christ, studying Christ, learning about Christ and his teachings, allows us to practice that. And by learning about him, and, and I mean learning about the creed, for example, that is essentially what drives us to abiding in Christ and practicing being in the light, being in the, in the life, or, or being in the truth, in the light, and in the love of God. And then abiding in God's commandments. We said this before. Uh, now he who keeps his commandments abides in him, and he in him. And by this we know that he abides in us by the Spirit whom he has given to us. That's 1 John 3, 24, said in a different way. So you see how John carries that theme of abiding in Christ from the Gospels uh, to his epistles, chapter, uh, the first epistle there, second epistle uh, as well. So it's a consistency and a driving, one of the main themes of the Gospel uh, of John and his epistles. So in conclusion, abiding in Christ, it's this intimate union that expresses itself in a way of life, in a way of life that's lived in love. So that union and that abiding in Christ is that way of life that's lived in love. It's not just some exalted mystical way of life, like, um, you know, they talk about uh, theosis and deification and this final step of spirituality 
and you see it in the holy fathers and mothers who have you know were contemplatives and uh, were able to 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 get to this point they were just so holy in their way of life yes it is part of the mystical way of life but but abiding in christ is not something that's kind of untouchable by the the normal rank and file like you and me in the church it is a practical day-to-day -day life lived by number one following the commandments with a spirit of love if you keep my commandments you will abide in my love just as i have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love and in first john 4 12 and 16 no one has seen god at any time if we love one another god abides in us and his love has been perfected in us and we have known and believed the love that god has for us god is love and he who abides in love abides in god and god in him so we have the keeping of the commandments number one and in that spirit of love in that second reference um and of course the reference before first john 3 24 he who keeps his commandments abides in him and he in him um now going uh and and so um we're talking about abiding in christ through a com through uh following the commandments with a spirit of love and also excuse me with a struggle against the world a struggle against the world for all that is in the world the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the father but is of the world and the world is passing away and the lust of it but he who does the will of god abides forever how often have we heard that at the conclusion of the catholic epistle and 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 just passed over it quickly he who does the will of god abides forever and so we're abiding in christ through keeping the commandments in a spirit of love we're abiding in christ through struggling against the world and and and, and struggling to do the will of god and we're abiding in christ by bearing fruit i am the vine you are the branches he who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. In order for us to have that spiritual fruit, we have to abide in him. We, he doesn't say you can do something, you can do a little, you can do your best. No, he says, without me you can do nothing. Abiding in Christ, this is an essential Christ, uh, principle of our entire Christian life. So yeah. while we cannot abide in Christ during these days through our partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we can minute by minute, day by day, uh, abide in Christ through these principles that we have uh, just mentioned here. I hope this is a source of benefit for all of you as well as a source of comfort. I want we hope you enjoy this Bible study.